Throughout the entirety of this season, the Denver Nuggets had one of the best offenses in the NBA, and so far in the playoffs, that's held up, scoring 118 points every 100 possessions, which is more than 4 points ahead of the postseason average. Their system is built on freedom of off-ball movement and constant action to free up shooters and cutters with Nikola Jokic controlling the middle of the floor. But there's one specific tactic they go to time and time again, especially to close games in the fourth quarter, and that's the two-man game between Jokic and Jamal Murray. They'll get into these actions in a ton of different ways. This is a set to open the game, where Jokic starts on the right wing, with Murray initiating. Jokic is going to curl off a screen down low, while Aaron Gordon simultaneously sets a ball screen at the top of the key that takes Anthony Edwards out of the play. And because Rudy Gobert is playing in drop coverage, all Jokic has to do is screen his own man, with nobody in position to take away a routine pull-up midi. The high pick and roll with Jamal handling and Jokic screening has become a staple of their offense. Per NBA Court Optics, this season Jokic set Murray over 11 ball screens a game, and they scored an impressive 1.21 points per possession, and this enables the big man to make reads away from the ball. He first fakes a backdoor cut before coming up to set a screen, but when Gobert jumps out, he slips right behind him downhill, forcing weak side defenders to slide over and opening up a volleyball tap to the free throw line jumper. Another way they'll get into these actions is with Jokic on the ball, flowing into dribble handoffs. This season, Murray scored 1.11 points per possession after receiving a handoff, landing in the 90th percentile among qualifying players, and this enables Jokic to make decisions with the ball. Alexander Walker does a great job of staying attached and preventing Murray from getting the pass, while Gobert's back in that helping position, so Joker instead keeps and rises up for a quality three-pointer. Just getting into these plays almost always creates an instant advantage to attack, and that's because Jokic is a massive screener. Of course, his size and frame make him a brick wall, but he also has perfect understanding of the timing and angles to bump chasers out of the play. Denver goes to a double drag out of the inbound, and Alexander Walker has no chance of recovering after contact with the screen allowing Murray to step into a warm-up elbow J. Notice how Jokic uses little hops to move towards Edwards, so that he can stop on a dime as soon as contact is about to occur, giving Jamal all the room in the world to get to his spot and knock down a triple. These screens just give Murray so much space to get into his attack, where he's a multi-layered scoring threat. The first of those layers is his pull-up shooting. He's an elite three-point shooter with tons of versatility. Phoenix's defense is getting ready to defend that handoff going downhill, so Denver counters by rejecting the action with a little flare screen to free him up on the opposite wing for a three ball off the catch. He's incredible at shooting on the move like this. Alexander Walker chooses to go under the screen, and that's just too much room for a shooter of his caliber. So this time, as they move in the opposite direction, he decides to chase him over, but even that doesn't really bother him. He only needs the smallest windows to comfortably pull the trigger. Jokic flips the screen while handing it off, so Murray cuts back to his left. And although Gobert is almost all the way out, he's not quite high enough. Towns comes up near the level of the screen in a hedge, so Jamal patiently waits for that retreat before rising up over the top of a decent contest. When needed, he'll also create added space for himself. He starts to drive, and Conley, in recovery, tries to beat him to that spot so he counters with a vicious step back to set up a fourth quarter dagger. On the season, he's taking some pretty tough threes, but his ability to create and make these shots, especially off the dribble, leaves him a lethal threat from beyond the arc. And it's not just from deep where he's looking to pull up, but the mid-range as well, forcing bigs to step outside of the paint to contest, 
which frees up Jokic in the paint. Ayton slides over to help alter Murray's step back jumper, leaving nobody down low to put a body on the putback. This is a pretty common thing. Jokic lands a hard screen on Akogi that forces Ayton to step out to the perimeter, so he's basically all alone in the middle of the paint for some really easy second chance offense. If the big steps out and Jokic gets the ball on a pass, any defense letting him attack with numbers is basically a death sentence. He just obliterates Craig with this screen, forcing Landale to step out to the ball. And he'll almost always make the best decision possible with a 4 on 3 advantage. Gobert hedges for just a second while Towns rotates over from the paint. And without thinking, it's a catch and immediate lob to Gordon in the dunker spot. This time it's Towns who's hedging, with Anderson rotating over from the back line. In one motion, he catches it with one hand and slings it to a cutting green for a wide open dunk. He's really mastered these reads, seeing every rotation the defense is going to make before they ever actually move. Prince is playing 2 on 1 right here, covering both Jokic and Gordon, so when Joker gets the pass, he instinctively touches it down low for a free 2 points. And this time, Minnesota finally does a good job of taking away a shot in the paint, with Gobert coming up to meet Jokic while Edwards slides down from the corner. But that just leaves a no look kick out to one of the best shooters in the NBA. So defenses have to ask themselves how they can prevent Jamal Murray from freeing up for three, while also not giving Jokic an advantage to attack. So most commonly what you'll see is Big staying home on the roll, while chasers go over the top of screens to run Jamal off the line. But that just gives him a free runway into the heart of the defense. Although Gobert's in that drop and in position to really bother a drive, because he goes to contest, there's nobody to stop Jokic from tipping it back in. Murray's just so good at turning the corner and using his handle to get deep into the paint, where he's got a pretty vast arsenal as a finisher, including all kinds of layups, crafty angles, and soft touch floaters. He's also a threat to reject the screen, which he used to punish Minnesota's hedge in round one. The way a hedge is supposed to work is that the point of attack defender forces the ball handler into using the screen and meeting that second body. But when it gets rejected, there's no immediate help, creating easier lanes to the cup. Murray throws a hesitation straight into a between the legs dribble to get the step on his man. And because Gobert's down low, ready to protect the rim, he slams the brakes to set up a floater. On top of being a real good inside the arc scorer, he's also a strong downhill playmaker. Booker slides over to the nail to take away that right hand driving angle, freeing up an off hand bullet to an open KCP in the corner. Denver's just loaded with shooters to surround these actions, so bringing in extra help away from the ball really isn't a plausible option. Jamal can also play a real patient game inside the arc, keeping his dribble live as he hunts for chances to strike. He pauses after getting the screen to make the defense think he's passing it back to Jokic, which gives him an angle all the way to the rim. He's got a really nice in-between game as well patiently waiting for Ayton to either commit to him or the roll man, and working his way in close for a floater. Here it is again, Gobert tells Ant to stay near Jokic at the top of the key while he's in that deep drop, which Murray counters by working his way to the elbow for an open jumper. And that's the thing, playing with patience and using that live dribble pressures the defense into really tough decisions like opening up Jokic on the roll. Jamal has absolutely mastered the timing on these passes, waiting until the very last second to draw shot blockers so that Joker can catch and score right away. Denver empties the right side of the court so that when Murray gets the ball, he can turn the corner on a drive, drawing the attention of Ayton and shoveling it to a downhill floater. 
Jokic lands a solid screen that turns this play into a two-on-one going at Anthony Davis, and Jamal actually leaves his feet, as if attempting to finish, to make AD commit, before throwing an absolutely beautiful laydown. This time, nothing really comes of the initial action, as Towns positions himself really well, so Murray changes directions to use the roll as a sort of roadblock, which frees up Jokic for a real easy jumper. Jokic isn't exactly a traditional athletic rollman, but his touch near that painted area is unrivaled, torching defenses within 10 feet of the basket with jumpers or floaters and because of his mid-range game, he has to be met early. This year, he shot 61% from mid-range on over 7 attempts a game, first in the entire NBA. But you can't sell out too hard because he'll fake and put it down on a drive. Opposing teams have to find ways to prevent him from catching the ball in the middle of the floor while not giving Murray a driving angle. Gobert does a great job of forcing a shovel pass while still in front of the roll, so Jokic does what any normal basketball player would do and just shovels it right back with a touch pass. This was a bit controversial, and I'm not sure if it was marked as an assist on the official scorebook, but the more I slow it down and watch it at various angles, I'm pretty positive that this was intentional, and you kind of have to give him the benefit of the doubt here because that's the type of connection these two have. Every time Jamal passes the ball, he knows to cut or stay close to the basket, because it'll come right back to him before the defense has any chance to react. Just unmatched chemistry and off-the-charts decision-making. Of course, Jokic can also pop to the three-point line, where he's a pretty big threat as a shooter. Over the past three seasons, he's hit 41% of his wide-open threes, and he'll take these at volume if the opportunities are there, while having that same ability to put it down and attack closeouts as a driver. While it's very commonly Murray's rim pressure, drawing in the defense and creating these open looks, that works both ways. As Jamal attacks, Towns is the helper, but he instead jumps out to Jokic, creating a much easier lane to the cup. Gobert's in a high drop, where he takes away the middle of the floor and forces the drive outside, and Conley seemingly recovers, so Rudy rotates back out to the perimeter to not leave Jokic open, but Murray's size allows him to play out of the low post and draw a goaltending call. At times, it feels like a defense's best option is just to switch the screen altogether, but that doesn't necessarily work either. Before we get into that though, I want to give a quick shout out to Basketball Index for helping with this analysis. If you're not familiar with the site, they provide tons of statistical measurements, tools, and easily accessible graphics. I earlier mentioned a few of their talent grades, and through their player profiles tab, I can easily compare them to other players around the league. Using Murray's three-point shooting as an example, on this page I'm presented with various metrics detailing his ability to create and make these shots, along with how he stacks up against his peers. By signing up with the code VENUE30, you can get 30% off your first month subscription, so I'll leave a link in the description below for anyone interested. And with that being said, let's take a look at how Denver attacks switching. Murray's a really effective isolation scorer, who can create for himself at all three levels, so by putting a bigger body on him, who's not quick enough to cut him off laterally, you're pretty much always conceding a decent look. But it's not just him you have to worry about. Gobert communicates a switch that leaves Alexander Walker matched up with Jokic, or in other words, a pretty nasty size advantage. Joker posts up, drawing extra help from Towns down low, and throws a laser beam to Jeff Green for an open layup. If you haven't noticed by now, there's not really any way to properly defend the two-man game without picking your poison and giving up something. Phoenix blitzes the action to get it out of Murray's hands, and nobody comes up to meet Jokic because that would give him a numbers advantage, so he'll just take the three that's given to him. 
What makes Denver truly unstoppable though, is how they weaponize the threat of these actions into other wrinkles and offensive pathways. The defense is expecting Murray to come and receive a handoff, but he instead fakes it and cuts into a screen that leaves KCP open to come and get it for a moving three. This time Murray's already in the paint and sets a back screen for Gordon to cut. Towns isn't ready for it and Edwards wants to stay attached to his man, so it's a free lob over the top. Here's the exact same action, except this time instead of setting the screen, Jamal slips himself for a real easy catch and finish. A quick note on that play, Towns and Gobert account for a large majority of their team's rim protection, and by setting up in this way, they're both stretched near the top of the key, and that's a find Jokic will make 10 out of 10 times. These sets they run just create endless options. Jamal first fakes the handoff and backdoors straight into a screen for Gordon to cut, which pulls two defenders into the paint and allows him to sprint back out to the three-point line for one of those moving triples. They'll also use the two-man game as a sort of decoy. Instead of rolling with the intention of getting the ball, Jokic just works his way to the elbow for a pin down, and no shot's a bad shot for Michael Porter Jr. Here's the exact same thing. Towns slides over to help on Murray's attack, meaning he's not in position to play the off-ball screen and MPJ frees up for a quality look from deep. This time as Jokic pops, there's no real advantage, so he immediately puts it down and flows into a different dribble handoff, allowing the 6'10 sniper to step into yet another great look from 3. And if they want to get really weird, they'll reverse the action and have Murray screen for Jokic, whose unique skill set doesn't just make these work, but with incredible success. So, just by having these two guys, Jamal Murray and Nikola Jokic, run their little two-man game, your offense is opened up to a seemingly endless amount of options that defenses just cannot find an answer for. When they shared the floor this season, Denver recorded a staggering 125.9 offensive rating, which doesn't even sound real and so far in the playoffs, they've remained over 120, despite playing tougher defenses who are actively scheming to limit them as much as possible, leading me to believe that this might just be the NBA's most unstoppable play. If you enjoyed this breakdown, make sure to drop a like, subscribe, and turn my post notifications on to be first on more content. If you're interested in my more in-depth research, make sure to check out my website and social media profiles. You can find those links in the description. Feel free to let me know down in the comments what you think of this duo and what the Nuggets ceiling as a team is. As always, I hope you all have a great day and I'll catch you guys in the next one.